kitchen. Now I know it can be really tricky sometimes, especially when you're starting out. You hear all these terms like fondant and sugar paste, icing, modeling paste, gum paste, floral paste, and it's tricky to know which one to use for which individual projects. So in this week's video tutorial, I'm gonna be looking at the differences between all of these things and going through their different characteristics. This way we know which one to use for which cake project. So the first thing that I wanna go through is fondant. And I have quite a few different examples of some different fondants here. But the first thing that I wanna mention is its name. Now, a lot of the time you may hear it referred to as fondant, but you may also hear people talk about sugar paste and also icing. Now, fondant, sugar paste, and icing are actually exactly the same thing. And they're all referring to this paste that you can roll out to cover your cakes. Now, one of the biggest characteristics of fondant is the fact that even though it can firm up slightly, it always remains soft. And this makes it the perfect covering for a cake. Now, sometimes I hear quite a lot that people either don't like the taste of fondant or they've used fondant and they don't like how it drapes or works or maybe it tears or you get elephant skin. Now, one piece of advice I would give is there are so many different companies out there making fondant and each of these actually have slightly different characteristics depending on the brand. So if you've used a fondant maybe you don't like the taste of, then always try Try another one as a different brand may taste completely different. Also, if you have a fondant that you've used that tears quite a lot, by changing to a different maker fondant, this can solve the problem straight away. So here I have a few different brands of fondant that we're gonna take a look at. So the first two packs that I've got here are both by Renshaw. Now this is a company that I always use quite a lot. I really love the taste of their fondant. It's got quite a traditional sugary ice taste which I love and I also love how it goes on cakes but here you can see there are two different packs and these two different packs have a slightly different characteristics so this first pack is just their ordinary covering paste the traditional white fondant but here we also have the sugar paste extra so what does this mean it's got slightly more elasticity than the regular fondant, which means you can roll it slightly thinner and you don't get as many tears. So here we can look at the different characteristics. This is the regular Renshaw and the Renshaw Extra. So if I stretch out the regular fondant, you can see that it breaks quite easily and doesn't have much stretch to it. But where we've got that extra fondant, when I stretch that out, we've got slightly more stretch before it rips off. This means with a fondant that has more elasticity to it, it's less inclined to rip as easily. Fondants that have different characteristics do actually taste slightly different to each other. The more softer fondants, the ones that rip a lot easier, are more of a traditional fondant that personally I grew up tasting on birthday cakes. So it's quite a sweet taste and that fondant just melts in your mouth. Ones that have a little bit more elasticity to them do have a different texture when you eat them. They are a lot smoother and don't melt in your mouth as much. It's really hard to explain without you trying them, but if you do find that you're using fondant and you really don't like the taste of it or your customers don't like the taste of it, then do try different fondants because they do taste slightly different. Another fondant that I've chosen to show you is the Velvet Smart Flex. Now you can see on this pack, this actually says white chocolate. So this fondant has a flavor to it. Now when you buy the normal Renshaw, you can see that it's quite squidgy when it's in the packet. So this makes it super easy to roll out. With something like the Velvet Smart Flex, this is actually quite a firm fondant. And one thing that you will find is the firmer the fondant in the packet, the more elasticity it usually has. And they just need to be warmed up slightly and just knead them in to soften them. 
if you do struggle to soften them, one thing that I always tend to do is just break them off small bits at a time, try and get them all together and pop them in the microwave on defrost for around five seconds. This just heats it up slightly so that you can really go in and knead that fondant before rolling it out. So now that is soft enough for me to work with, you can see that that Smart Flex is a super stretchy fondant. As I mentioned, the more elasticity you've got, you're less likely to get tears. But I have also found that the more traditional softer fondants, I do find those sometimes a bit easier to smooth out with my smoothing paddles and my flexi smoothers. So when it comes to fondant, you just want to find one that you enjoy working with and that you like the characteristics of. Now, another thing is these are white fondants. So you have the option to buy a white fondant, you might want to use it white or you might want to colour it yourself. To colour fondant you just want to use some edible food gel, add it in and just knead that colour through. By adding a food gel these are super concentrated so you only need a small amount of colour. You're also not adding any liquid to your fondant so it stops it being super sticky. If you don't like colouring your own fondant or you don't have time, you can also buy all of the brands of fondant usually in colours too. So to round up, fondant is used as a covering for your cakes. Now you can also use it for edible cake toppers or to make little models too. But the thing that you have to remember is Fondant is created to stay soft. So if you create any cake toppers, they're not gonna go super hard. Now, one of the great things about fondant is because it does remain soft, you can work with it for quite a long time before it starts to go hard. But if you're using it to create models, you may want to create models that go slightly firmer than just a basic fondant. So this is where modeling paste comes in. So this one is the pasta model by Saracino and I love using this for creating models. The characteristics of a modeling paste are very similar to a fondant, but it is slightly firmer. You have quite a lot of elasticity to it. You can model it, smooth it out, and if you leave it overnight, it will firm up. Now, it may take 24 hours, you may want to leave them for a little bit longer, but you're going to get super nice, firm models using a modelling paste. Now, one thing you want to remember is a modelling paste does go a lot firmer over time, so you wouldn't want to use this as a covering for your cakes, as you would never be able to cut them. It also doesn't have the greatest taste, so even though it is an edible medium that you're using, it's usually not something that you would want to eat. So as you can see with this Saracino modelling paste, it starts off quite hard, but I just need to knead small amounts at a time, and you can see how pliable it becomes. This does have quite a lot of stretch to it. As you warm that up in your hands, just smoothing that out, you get a nice smooth finish. And I usually find that when working with this, creating models, it remains soft enough for the whole duration. If you do have any excess, you do just want to wrap it in some cling film or pop it back in that plastic bag that it came with and just seal it up in the container. But this is great for working on cake toppers and on models. Now do stay around until the end of the video as I will be making some models with each of these, leaving them overnight so that we can see how firm they actually get. Okay, so the third thing and something that I actually talk about quite a lot on the channel is gum paste or floral paste. Now you've probably seen me use the Squires floral paste quite a lot on the channel. It's just the one that I always tend to use and tend to work with but there are so many different brands of different floral paste or gum paste that you can use. And just like with the others, I've got the white here but you can also buy it pre-coloured too. Now this pack has has been opened and I do always tend to seal it up with some sellotape once I've used it just to stop any air getting in and drying that gum paste out. 
just with modeling paste and with some of the fondants it does come out a little bit stiffer so just by working that into my hands I will start to soften it up now gum paste and floral paste has very similar characteristics to that modeling paste you can roll it out super thin it has a nice stretch to it but the main difference is it will firm up a lot quicker than modeling paste and this makes it perfect for creating small intricate flowers because it means that they're going to hold their shape a lot quicker one thing with gum paste or floral paste is the thinner that you roll it once it has hardened and dried it does become quite fragile so you do have to take a bit more care with anything that you've created using gum paste as it can break quite easily you just want to make sure that when working with gum paste any excess that you're not using at the time you wrap in cling film and you keep in an airtight container as it can dry out super quickly but personally I love working with gum paste it creates the most realistic flowers and you know that they're gonna last now you may have seen modeling videos or cake videos and there is another product that is mentioned that you can add to these to slightly change its characteristics and this is tylo powder so tylo powder is a hardening agent so by using a small amount of tylo powder and adding this into fondant or into your modeling paste this actually allows it to firm up a lot more so you're making a very simple form of gum paste so when working with tylo powder you just want to add a small amount into your fondant and just mix that so it's distributed evenly. And one thing that I do find is the fondant will still have the same characteristics as the fondant you started with. So this was the soft fondant, so it doesn't gain any stretch to it. All you're doing is adding in a hardening agent. Now, I know that we've been looking at these and we've been playing with these and looking at the different characteristics, but it can be really hard to know what the final thing is gonna look like. So what I'm actually going to do is use one of the brands of fondant, the modeling paste and the gum paste and I'm actually going to create some roses. I'm then going to leave these overnight to firm up and we're going to take a look at them tomorrow so you can see how they end up after 24 hours. As I make my roses, I just want to show you the difference between fondant and gum paste. So I've just placed these on my foam mat and I have my ball tool. Now, if I use my ball tool around the edge of that gum paste, I rolled it quite thin and I can go around the edge with no worry that that gum paste or floral paste is gonna rip. If I try the same thing with my fondant, as I go round, you can see it just starts to pull it apart. So if you are making roses or anything delicate out of fondant, you have to be so much more careful than you have to be when using gum paste. Okay, so I've made four roses and it's been 24 hours since I made them. These have just been sat in a nice cool room. We've got a rose that I made from fondant. We've got one that I made from the fondant with a bit of Tylos powder added in. We've got the modeling paste and also the gum paste or floral paste. Now, as you can see, they all look fairly similar and I've tried to keep them the same size. But the question is, how how hard have they gone? So first of all, we've got the rose that was made from fondant. I was able to get the fondant rolled quite thinly, but I didn't actually want to create the rose any bigger than this, as it was quite difficult to model because the fondant was so soft. Now you can see a small amount of breakage just on this one petal. So this has been left for 24 hours and you can see that it is still super soft so it hasn't really firmed up at all this makes it great for eating but if you wanted something that was going to hold its shape after 24 hours it's not firm at all next we have the rose that I used the fondant with a small amount of Tylos powder added in. Now I can feel straight away that it is slightly more firm than the fondant was on its own but it is still 
quite soft. It's doing a great job of holding its shape, but we are able to just peel those petals off still. So even though we've added that Tylose powder, it hasn't made it as crumbly, I would say, as the fondant on its own, but I am still able just to squish that rose. Next we have the modeling paste. Now, just like with the floral paste, I was able to add in a wire because it was a little bit more firmer to start with. I was also able to roll those petals a little bit finer and just go in a little bit more with that bottle. Now, this has firmed up a lot more than the fondant, but it does still have a slight squidge to it. So it's firm enough for that rose to keep its shape, but it would need slightly longer to firm up. Now, this is quite a delicate flower, and I would say the modeling paste is also really great for chunky models if you're creating animal cake toppers or little pairs of shoes to go on the top of your cake, for example. So lastly, we have the floor paste or the gum paste. Now, this is totally different to all three of them. If you can hear me tap on that, it has gone completely solid. And this is why gum paste is really great for making flowers and those intricate toppers as after just a few hours, it was already firm to the touch. And you can see that none of those petals, if I push on them, can be pulled back. So you have these three products. You have fondant, which remains quite soft. You then have modeling paste, which you can use to create little models for your cakes. By using a modeling paste, you get a little bit more time, but it does firm up. You then have gum paste, and this is perfect for those intricate little details or flowers, and it dries completely solid. I really hope this video has helped explain the different characteristics and help you choose the correct one to use for your next cake project. Now, I will put links to all the products that I've shown in this video in the description below so you can find them there. Plus, if you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this and you haven't already, then don't forget to subscribe to the Case Bunnings YouTube channel. So, until next time, bye.